what is up it's mtg of mtg reviews today as you can see we have one of the best selling buggies in sa the isuzu d max this is such an interesting car to be in this specific spec that we have here is the ls automatic so stick around for some few minutes nyana to know most things about it and on how it compares to the almighty hilux so without further ado let's get to it Starting with the looks, and oh, okay, before we, we continue, please do consider subscribing as we're trying to hit 1k subscribers. Danko. Spoiler alert, I love the design of this car. It's muscular yet pretty. I think it comes third when it comes to looks, only falling behind the Hilux and the Ford Ranger. And it comes third as well when it comes to sales, and which is like a nice coincidence. This big grill has egg fangs look design, which I'm not sure how I feel about and it has the isuzu branding and which is prominent here it's on the top of the grill what i think makes this car looks good is the headlights they are beautifully designed and they're not huge headlights unlike most buggies which is a refreshing look and just below that we have the indicators which are placed on the bumper along with the fog lights and the design of the bumper is a bit aggressive without being excessive Swiftly moving to the side profile, here what really stands out is the lower part on both doors. As you can see, there's this interesting line flow design which helps the car not to look bland on the side because, I mean, besides that, there's nothing really striking. There's this shoulder line that it's alright. But what's worth mentioning on the side is these huge wing mirrors. And I'm all for that. These, these, these are good actually for visibility. But the main thing is that they present is the wind noise when you're inside. But yeah, it is what it is. And another thing here on the side is the tires and wheels. We have the all-terrain tires and we have 18-inch wheels, which I really love the design of. I'm more into this kind of design um, instead of the two-tone one that basically every car has right now, the black and it has the silver. Yeah, so I'm more into these ones and these ones are really good. They pop, especially under the sunlight. They have this chrome look nyana without like being excessive. It's It's really cool. And moving to the back here, yeah, there's nothing really much that's interesting. We have this nice design flow on the back lid, and we have this heavy duty roll bar, which is a nice touch. And while we are here, the max payload of this car is at 1095 kilograms and can tow up to 750 kilograms of unbrake trailer. And that can go up to 2100 kilograms if the trailer is braked, meaning that the trailer has its own brake. It's not only dependent on the car's brakes. So yeah, it can tow up to 2100 kilograms of that. Now sliding into the interior, which I really like the overall design. It looks good, but then it has its own flaws actually. Um, the infotainment screen looks very nice you see it's not on now it's still off but then it looks like it's a nice size but yeah it really is small on the ls uh it's only seven inches you can get the nine inches on the v cross the infotainment on its own is flawed the ui design is not really good so it, it looks like those cheap aftermarket infotainment systems which is not really well designed as you can see and yeah but then it does have phone connectivity just like android auto and apple carplay which i believe that's what most people are going to use anyways inside this car and that's wireless as well so you don't need the cable to use that but then yeah the, the infotainment is just not nice and just under that we have the shortcut buttons which are good since this infotainment isn't really user friendly but however i don't like the volume buttons like being controlled like by pressing like this instead of a knob uh, it's just nah i think a knob would have been like a better thing to do and under that we have the climate controls in which yeah they're okay as you can see nothing really special here but what i love about that is that look at these events the orientation of them is what i really like as i've mentioned on the half valve review that yeah you can you can click on the pop ad banner up there to to watch that review yeah moving to the gear knob area the gear knob by itself it's it's a nice design but then around it we have um six actually it's four unusable buttons so it's blank buttons only two that you can use in which is the reverse camera button and the hill descent control button which you can use when you are off-road it can help you 
to go downhill yeah it's mostly for off-road use so yeah and another thing that we have here on the center is the center storage which is actually deep it's nice the, the size is okay it's yeah that's just that man there's nothing really interesting here as much so yeah now the steering wheel has this really good look uh with the chrome piece just below nyana on that design it has the multifunctional buttons where you can set the cruise control and change the information displayed on this small screen on the gauge cluster and talking about the gauge cluster these analog arms light up when you switch the car uh, on they do this movement nyana in which is pretty cool so what's left with the interior is just the seats um these seats are leather seats which are they are they, they are really comfortable and even the back ones as you can see they are well bolstered and they look really good you can sit here for hours uh, and even the knee knee space is that decent so yeah it's good and that's with with the interior so getting to the performance of this car this car pumps out at disappointing uh, 110 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque from its 1.9 liter four-cylinder diesel engine yeah that's quite disappointing and which is and it's a bit unusual to have a 1.9 on a buggy they usually start at 2.0 liters of engine capacity but yeah that is what it is the fuel consumption it's not bad the claimed fuel consumption is not bad at 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers which you most certainly won't achieve it's gonna be way higher than that the engine is slightly disappointing you can feel that when you accelerate it just doesn't have good pickup i mean this car actually weighs 3000 kilograms so yeah the power is just not enough to move this car by itself so imagine towing a trailer that weighs 2100 kilograms yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because the car is gonna be pulling 5100 kilograms with 110 kilowatts and 350 newton meters it's gonna be sluggish so yeah and the fuel tank capacity is at 76 liters which is actually uh, i don't know it's not that big but it's okay for this car i guess because it's a 1.9 and the fuel consumption is not that high the clean fuel consumption is not that high so how does this car match up to the highlights so if you want to match this car price for price with the highlights you would have to settle for the manual transmission 2.4 gd6 on the highlights with the same power figures and you're gonna get more torque out of the hilux as opposed to this one this one has 350 newton meters as i've already mentioned the hilux has 400 however the claim fuel consumption is basically the same but the payload is way lower on the hilux 864 kilograms however the unbrake trailer towing capacity is the same it only goes up on the hilux when it's brake towing since it manages 2750 while the isuzu only manages 2100 kilograms so and the highlights actually weighs less than the ice cream so yeah these are seemingly fairly matched that's until you factor in that the hilux is manual and the dmx is automatic so yeah for the automatic hilux you'll have to pay 623,000, which is 20,000 more than the dmx for the automatic on the dmx so yeah the dmx might have a chance against the hilux actually talking about the price how much would it cost you monthly to own this car so it cost 603,800 as it is so at an interest rate of 12 percent over six years with no deposit the monthly installment would be at 11,897 rand and factoring in diesel at an estimate of 3,200 and insurance at an estimate of 3,000 the price would round up to 18,097 rand and would go down to 16 thousand and eight hundred and forty three rands with ten percent deposit so yeah owning this car is not for the faint-hearted it's it's quite pricey so what's my conclusion on this car i think it's a good buggy and will for sure get better as there's gonna be a facelift in which i think is gonna address the infotainment issues i hope so and well however for six hundred and three thousand um I'm, I'm getting the highlights i don't mind the the manual i i know how to shift gears so yeah it's it's pretty cool but i'm getting the highlights so yeah Danko.